think about the intensity of electromagnetic radiation, or the intensity of light. Do you remember what the formula is for calculating intensity? What's the basic formula that defines the intensity? Do you remember that? Oh, the, the power of the area. Yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, I guess we need a little flowchart. So let's start with the uh, power. Huh? No, let's start with work and energy. I always got to go back to basics. Work and energy. So we'll make a little flow chart here. Power. Do you remember what the formula is that relates power and work? Um, it's, it's joules per second. So it's divided by time. The power is. I'm going to say it's the work over time. But remember that in many contexts, the work tells you the change in energy. So oftentimes you can say either it's the work over the time or the change in energy over time, because the work tells you how much the energy is changing. I think this is a little bit more of an official formula. And it's good that you remember that the power is joules per second. There's a special name for that power. Right. I'm not going to use W for what or for work, because I don't want to get those confused with each other. So what does it mean if you got a 100 watt light bulb? Yeah. I like the technique of putting a 1 next to each uh, unit. In one second, it would use 100 joules. In one second, it would use 100 joules. So how much energy would it use in three seconds? Yeah, that should be clear. Notice what you really did there, though, is you did power times time equals work. That's what you usually would have to do on the test. It's too easy to just give you work and time. They give you power and time. You have to find the work, which is the energy as well. That's clear from the units. Three seconds times 100 joules per second is 300 joules. What does the power tell us? It tells us the rate that we're doing work, which is the rate that we're using energy. All right, now we're ready for the intensity. Yeah, that's an important concept now, so let's take our time on that. Do you remember what the formula is that relates intensity and power? Power over the by area. Okay. All right. Well, you might not have the intuition yet, but you got the formula, so that's the first step. What would be a good symbol for intensity? Well, I think we've seen either I or S used for intensity. Either I or S might be used for intensity. So the intensity is the power over the area. There's no special name for the unit for intensity. So what would the units be? No watts per meter squared. Okay. So it's good that you know that the units for area are square meters. All right, so let's try to get a little more intuition for intensity. Um, I, mean, I guess it, I mean, uh, the, so if, if there's a surface in one square meter, that amount of space uses that much energy and that much time. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, so let's try to interpret. Let's say that we have sunlight that has an intensity of 100 watts per square meter. Sunlight that has an intensity of 100 watts per square meter. How do we interpret that? Well, remember that the trick that I think is very useful is to put a number in front of every unit. What's the number we could put in front of this unit without changing? So the interpretation here is um, that on an area of one square meter, uh, in this, uh, with sunlight this intense, an area of one square meter would absorb a power of 100 watts. A good example, a good way to think of this is as if you're building solar panels. I like the solar panel example. Suppose you built a one square meter solar panel and you put it in the sunlight, it would absorb enough, it would absorb 100 watts of power. But just in terms of like the wave, or like the, so you saying that it's that much, it's like kind of describing how much energy is like kind of concentrated in it? Yes. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, it's describing how much, how much power is concentrated in it, uh, which is how much energy, pretty much. Okay. okay, so what's the practical implication of this? Well, suppose you built a one square meter solar panel here. If there was no energy loss, you could use that to run a 100 watt light bulb. 
This tells us that if you build a 100 square meter, uh, 100, uh, one square meter solar panel, you can use it to run a 100 watt light bulb. So suppose that you only need to run a 50 watt light bulb. How much solar panel would you need? Half a meter. Yeah, you don't need half, half a meter. meter. Half a meter then would uh, absorb enough power for a 50 watt light bulb. So this is a very practical unit if people are actually designing solar panels. Remember that we're focusing here on the intensity of electromagnetic radiation and light. So solar panels are a good example. By the way, notice that what um, we kind of just did there is I gave you the power and the intensity, and you figured out the area. Now, here it was just common sense, but if necessary, you could do that by algebra here. You could solve this equation for area, and you can see that power divided by intensity is area. Or, more likely, you can see that power is area times intensity. So there's lots of different things you can figure out from this. The power is the area times the intensity. For example, what power would we get from a three square meter solar panel in this light? So, uh, How much power? 300 watts. I think that's common sense, but you can also see from the formula, power is area times intensity. Now, to get a little more intuition here, what's a watt? A joule per second. So we could write the equation like, we could write it like this. Now, again, the key to interpreting this is to put a number in front of every unit. What's a number I could put in front of the S without changing the fraction? Just one, two. And I can put a one here, too. So now, what does this tell us about solar panels? So in one second, you could light. So if you put one second of light on, shining on that panel, or of one of size, <laughs> one square meter, then you could you get 100 joules from it. That's right. Now this is telling us that the sunlight is intense enough that if you build a one square meter solar panel and leave it out for one second, it will absorb 100 joules of energy. Or maybe it could power 100 joules of work if there's no uh, energy loss. So this tells us in more detail. So the intensity is telling us how much energy you're receiving per second per square meter. The intensity is telling you how much energy you're receiving per second per square meter. And then if you know how many seconds you're leaving the panels out, and if you know how big the panels are going to be, you can figure out the total amount of energy that you're going to get. OK, good. So if you were doing, say, two seconds and two square meters, um, I guess he would get 400 joules. Okay. So if you're given the intensity, how can you find the energy? So you just, um, so you have intensity, so you just use formulas, I guess. So you, yeah. So let's describe exactly how we would, if we know the intensity, how, what would we have to figure out to find the energy? We need to figure out the power, and then if you have the time, we can find it. Ah, yeah. So I guess so the point is, if you know the intensity and the area, you can find the power. And then if you know the power and the time, you can find the work of the energy. So if you knew the intensity, area, and time, yeah. you can find it. Yeah, that's right. We were just saying that in that last example. Now, remember here we're talking about the energy from electromagnetic radiation. But remember that that energy is quantized because we can think of light as being composed of photon particles. And each photon particle has some of the energy. And things can only absorb the energy one photon at a time. So, If you know the energy, how do you find the frequency? With um, H times F is energy. Good. Now, I think we previously already did a flow chart about energy, and we saw that the energy formula for photons is completely different from energy for, say, electrons. When they talk about energy of an electron, they probably mean the kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. But this is the formula for the energy of a photon. Maybe I should actually even write that in here. Because that's like such a common mistake. The energy of the photon equals h times the frequency of the photon. You would not use this for particles with mass, like an electron. We did a whole different flowchart with that in the previous session. Yeah. 
What's the units for frequency? Hertz. Okay. And what would be a good intuitive way to think of Hertz? Centimeters. Hertz cycles per second. Right. All right. And while we're at it, what's the symbol for wavelength? And the unit is? Good. And what would be a formula that would relate the frequency and the wavelength? Yeah, it's fair to use C here because we're focusing on light and electromagnetic radiation and we're going to be in a vacuum where the air, so we can use this formula. All right, so here's a good flowchart. 